Hi everyone, you reach Chronicles of the Grey Hair Diva. If this is your first time, welcome. If not, welcome back. For all of you out there, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that every time I upload a video, you will be notified. Hit the like button, chat with me in the comments, and when I get an opportunity, I will chat back. And share my video with your friends and family so that they can come to my channel and get to know me also. I'm here today with a quick video on well, her former name was Corinne Steffens. The entertainment industry knew her as Superhead, and now she goes by the name Elizabeth. Well, Elizabeth, Corinne Steffens, Superhead, she's the prime example of a, a female losing it when their baby daddy or alleged baby daddy no longer wants them and will not acknowledge them or the seed that they're carrying. Now, it's very sad when men do this, but listen, this is not nothing new. This has been happening before I was born. It's probably going to happen to females when I'm long and gone. It's probably going to happen into the century and the days are long, okay? So she did a whole two hour, listen guys, one hour, 40 four minutes and something like that live live talking about a whole lot of stuff and i listened to it for you guys i was actually going to play it for you guys but i said should i really subject them to this two hour live i could just send them to her instagram page if they really want to see the whole thing but i listened to it once i listened to it twice because i had to really pull out the gist of what was going on and i'm telling you out of that whole two hours you know what the gist that is going on like I said, she mad that the baby daddy don't want her no more, won't acknowledge her, and don't care, unfortunately, nothing about her unborn seed. But see, here's the thing, people. At the end of the day, as a female, and listen, life ain't fair. So if we can go through this ain't fair, diva, it's not right. Well, <laughs> life ain't fair. This point blank period. And we can do all type of parades, marches, uh, write all kind of laws or whatever the case may be. After all those laws are written, after all the marches are done, after we come home, they are pet on, pet, um, head on the pillow, it's still life ain't going to be fair. That's it. That's it and that's all. So, so y'all know that I'm not just making this up. I'm just going to show you really quickly where her live is, right? And then I'm going to give you my take on this situation. Now, she goes by everything Elizabeth for Instagram. That's her. She's a beautiful girl. She's 44. She's beautiful. She was beautiful when she first came out way back when, and she's still gorgeous now. But that's her. Um, very emotional in this live. Um, you know, saying she hasn't eaten. She can't eat because when she's emotional, she just can't eat. She can't even swallow. She could barely drink water. She went through all of that, okay? Everybody she gets with is a narcissist. She can't stand men. It's a mess. It's a whole hot mess. But you can go there and watch it. I already did. I'm not going to subject you to this whole thing again. So let me just give you a background on her. In the 2000s, you know, that's when videos for the music industry, like, they was a big thing. Or artists, they come out, drop an album or whatever, and they do the music video to kind of follow it up. And she was considered a video vixen. So, way before all of these Instagram models with the big booties, the big boobs, the long hair and all of that, there were video vixens. She, Corinne Steffens, but now goes by Elizabeth, was like, I'm going to say one of the number one video vixens at the top of the food chain when it comes to video vixens, okay? So much so in 2005, she wrote a book, and that's where I think she messed up, okay? These are just my opinions. She wrote a book, Confessions of a Video Vixen. She wrote that book. That book was kind of like a tell-all. It told the stuff that happened, the dirty, nasty, filthy stuff that happened in the industry behind closed doors. But what more importantly, what it really told was all the people she slept with. And let's forget about Video Vixen for a, a hot second, right? Let's forget about that for a minute. Let's just talk average, everyday people. When a couple gets together or people get together, and they decide to sleep together, the cardinal 101 rule of that relationship or any relationships is you don't kiss and tell, period. When we telling our business, so you came to my house and we did a little something, something, that's between you and I. Shut your mouth. Don't be running these streets telling everybody. 
And it's bad enough if you run the streets and tell everybody, but now you want to write it in a book? Can't never take that book back? That book was a number one seller. That book was in everybody's hands back in 2005 when she wrote Confessions of a Video Vixen. She was in there telling who she slept with, how she slept with her, what she did, didn't do, so forth and so on. Got labeled as Superhead. That's what her nickname was, if you want to call it that, in the industry. They called her Superhead. Why they called her Superhead? Okay, let's be adults here. Put it two and two together. They called her Superhead. Why? Because a sexual thing that they said she does extremely well. Extremely well. Now, let's be clear. When it comes to anything in life, whether it's cooking, you can have cook A, you can have cook B. This person cooks, I could cook anything. This person, you know, they can't really cook. Same thing goes with sex. You know, you have a person that they just know how to work their body. They know how to work your body. They know how to do you right. And you enjoy it and you love it. So they said that this girl was at the top of her game when it came to superhead stuff. Okay. So a lot of people were curious. A lot of men. A lot of men, even though they knew her reputation, they wanted to get with her just to experience that thing that she knew how to do very well. But listen, guys, she capitalized off her situation. She wrote books. She did talks. She did seminars. She has a podcast. She even wants to claim that men should marry sluts. Why does she claim that? Because when she did an interview with Essence, I want to say it was last year, she pretty much said that the thing she wants most, she said, forget about, you know, fame, fortune, all that. I would love to be a housewife. So that the core of her, she never wanted to be all this. She wanted to be a housewife. But she know now that she has paid a pathway um, of, of being having this reputation of being a slut. Not my words, guys. Follow me. Not trying to slut shame her, right? But she left the little breadcrumbs of her being a slut, wrote the book, tried to capitalize off of that whole thing. And so now she has to convince men out there, listen, it would be to your advantage if you marry a slut. I'm beautiful. And she's a beautiful girl. I'm beautiful. Not only am I very pretty, um, but I could, in the, when it comes in the bedroom, I got that thing together. I'm going to make you feel good. Because even in this live, she gets a little raw, okay? When she's talking about baby daddy. Now, who is her baby daddy or her alleged baby daddy? He is a reality star. He was on that show Top Chef. So he's a chef, okay? And his name is Kwame. He's 33 years old, so he's about 10 years younger than her. And, and you know, here's the thing what I think with him. I think with him, because like I said, she's gorgeous, right? She's gorgeous in this video, no makeup, not even feeling well, haven't eaten in days, according to her in that video, and she still looks amazing. So picture that, okay? Imagine when she glams herself up. So I know when he saw her, he was like, wow. Probably didn't he, he you know, man, they, they know. Because if Kwame didn't know who she was, somebody in his camp, in his circle knew, oh, that's Superhead. She could change her name a thousand times. She still, unfortunately, is going to be connected to her past. A video vixen. Superhead. So, someone in his camp was like, oh, that's Superhead. Oh, you want to get with her? He's like, I'm going to just talk to him and have fun. And that's what he did. So, the thing with men, they will, they will treat a slut right. They will take you to dinner. They will tell you they love you. They will be in your face all day long, in your bed, doing everything. Doing all kind of couple things. But at the end of the day, in the back of their head, don't get it twisted. They still consider you a slut. They still would never take you home to mommy and daddy. They still would never walk down the aisle with you. Okay? And they definitely, definitely, definitely do not want you carrying this heat. Now, does he own a part of this? Should he have went in you? I'm sorry, guys, raw. And he knew he didn't want you to be the mother of his kids? No, he shouldn't have. But they do that. Men do it. They stupid. But now he did it. And he's treating you how he thought about you the whole time. Like a slut. Because you know what he did? He sent her through his lawyers a cease and desist. Shut your mouth. Leave me alone. Stop naming me. Stop calling me. Stop putting me in your social media. They even wanted her to take the pregnancy test down. He don't want nothing to do with you. 
She can't call him, write him, see him. He blocked up from everything. And then in addition to that, through his lawyers, he said, we want a paternity test. I don't know if that baby is mine. That is the ultimate insult to injury when you are a man, knowing you and that female was having a relationship and it was supposed to be just y'all. Y'all was sleeping together, left, right, night, day, all in between. And now when they say they're pregnant, you want to talk about you want a paternity test because you don't know who who that baby is and you don't know what she been doing and who she been sleeping with. Messy. But that's the law. Lowest is low, but that's what they will do you. He thought about that way about you the whole time, Elizabeth. So now she's on the live for two hours, emotional wreck. I'm talking about, you know, she's always running into narcissists. How bad her marriage was when she was married. How everything was being blamed on her. She keeps her receipts. How, you know, when he she saw him with some other chick and she got all emotional. And he was playing head games with her. Well, that's what they do. They play head games with you. But the thing is, Elizabeth, you said you're wiser now. That's what she said in a, a Essence article. Um, I want to say in 2021 or 2022, maybe. She's wiser now. How wise are you? This man is 33, you 44, and he ran game on you. But the game he ran on you was the oldest trick in the book. And you fell for it. So now she's emotional. She's pregnant. She can't eat. She's all in her feelings to the point where she's thinking, you know what, um, you know, she said in, in the past she had suicidal thoughts. I don't even think I was supposed to say that word. And then, you know, she's saying that, you know, save this live, record this, save this, share this. Because if I'm missing, if you're missing, Elizabeth, this video, well, we should look at him as the first person. Maybe that was your point. And then she was in L.A., but he's from New York, so she has brought herself to New York looking out for an apartment in New York. But really, she's chasing after him. But she's saying that, she's swearing, like, I haven't been stalking you, trying to call you, I haven't been trying to do all that. Girl, then you should have stayed in L.A. Talking about he was supposed to come in L.A. to talk to me about the baby and everything that we're supposed to do. And this is a high-risk pregnancy. But she brought herself to New York. And the reason why she brought herself to New York is hoping that he would see this live, try to come talk to her, feel bad, feel sorry. But girl, he got what he wanted. He's done. And he wants nothing to do with you. And that's why he got his lawyers to tell you to pretty much shut up. Give us a paternity test. If you have the baby, when you have the baby, I'll do my part. But that's it. I'm done. It was a lot. But I'll say this. Most men will never try to turn a, 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 a hoe into a housewife. Most men really don't want a female that has a reputation as hers, okay? Where she slept with so many people and they consider her something else because you know why? He's a chef. He's a well-known chef. He has a, a, a big personality. And the last thing he wants is to be walking into rooms and different doors with you on his hand, telling everybody that you're his wife. And the people giving a side eye like, oh, ain't that, that's, oh, he married soup. Oh, didn't she sleep with this one, that one, and that one? Oh, isn't she known for this? And people are always going to try her. Men are going to try her. Okay. When, when you, when she, whoever she's with, the husband is really going to have a lot of work to deal with because you're always going to have some foolish, ridiculous man trying to try her, um, you know, seeing if she's still the way she was in the past. Listen, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button. Chat with me in the comments. And when I get an opportunity, I will chat back. Um, what do you think? Did you see her live? This Kwame, the chef, you know, shame on him. But I'm not shocked. This is what men do. Okay. So I wish her well. And I also, because she she's saying, I felt like, and I could be wrong, but I watched it more than once. I felt like she's basing the decision on whether or not to have her baby is, you know, what he's going to do. And she even talked about how prior to this pregnancy, um, she terminated another pregnancy um, and really didn't want to. But I guess she felt like she was forced to because of the circumstances of the relationship. And my advice to her is if you know that your pregnancy, if you ever get pregnant, 
is going to be based upon whether or not the person who impregnates you is going to be in your life or not, then why don't you start using birth control? So that way, the next time you possibly turn up pregnant, it will be with your husband. Like someone that you marry. This Kwame, um, you got yourself into this. Um, that thing between your legs, you see what you got yourself into? A whole hot mess. Okay, and she's a live wire because she said on that live that, listen, I give energy for energy. You tick me off, I'm going to tick you off. You do me dirty, I'm going to do you dirty. Now, I don't know where she got wise at, but, you know, at 44, you should have been a little more wiser than that, Elizabeth. All right, guys, chat with me and I will chat back. Kwame, shame on you. Fix up this mess you created. And he wanted her to take off her social media, you know, any, 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 you know, inkling that he could possibly have anything to do with her and the baby in her belly. He's a mess. Hit that like button and I'll see you on the next video.